Edgecam's workflow interface allows both views and CPLs to be easily manipulated using the view genome, located in the lower left corner of the graphic view. Notice that aspects of the genome highlight as the mouse is passed over them, indicating possible actions that can be taken. If I click on the shaft of the Z axis and move, notice that the view is moved only in Z. If I click on the ring around rot X rotation, notice that we rotate around the X axis. It's also possible to create CPLs using the genome. This is a pump housing requiring fifth axis positioning and CPLs on many different part faces. When I position the mouse over the base of the genome, I can click and drag the genome to different areas of the part. If I drag over a particular flat face, the Z axis is snapped to be perpendicular to that face. When I release the genome, we can begin creating a CPL. We'll name this one Pad1. There are three manipulations possible while creating a CPL. If I click on the base, I can modify the origin, and I can snap to an origin point such as this here. If I click on a shaft, I can actually pull a specific distance, such as in this case, a quarter of an inch. If I select a ring, I can get into part rotation. Both angles I type in, as well as snapping to different standard positions. When I finish, I've created a new CPL. Let's apply that same technique to this face here. Drag a CPL to the face, give it a name, Specify the origin position. The CPL is created. This part also has some angled holes. And angled holes present a little bit of a different problem because there's not a flat face. When I drag the view genome and position it in the cylinder of the hole, notice that the view indicator snaps to align the z-axis to the hole. So if I release on the hole, We've just created a CPL that aligns the z-axis for the drilling required for that hull. We want to point out that the CPL commands that you may be familiar with with creating and editing CPLs are still available. If I edit the CPL and I choose, for example, Pad 1, notice there's a new option called Associative. This allows the CPL to be relational to the solid now. We'll assign it to this solid body since there are multiples in this part and I'll repeat this with the pad2 command as well. This allows the CPLs to move if the part is moved at a later point. Let's switch back to the top CPL. I'm going to create some features quickly to demonstrate another aspect of feature CPL improvement. We've asked EdgeCam to find all the holes on the part, resulting in many features and the features are tied to system assigned CPLs when possible, as well as CPLs created for feature recognition called auto CPLs, such as hole find one. Notice that I can take the features on the front CPL and I can right click over them and have an ability now to change the CPL assignment for these features. We'll change to the pad one CPL. Notice that only CPLs that match the facing are listed This will make it possible for machining strategies to build toolpath that indexes to the correct CPL, speeding up the toolpath creation process. With the top CPL active, let's demonstrate the associative CPL behavior. I want to take the part and rotate the part 90 degrees around the Z axis. When I select the origin point, we'll index around there, and we'll take everything in the part. The part has been oriented, and notice that in addition to rotating the part, the features moved and the CPLs, pad one, pad two, and angled hole one, have all moved with it because they're associative to the solid. In past versions, it was not possible to rotate the solid after features were created. 
Associative CPLs provide greater flexibility and the many improvements in EdgeChem 2014 R2 reduce the effort required to build Toolpath.